glass of water. Mr. Freud? Or a cup of tea? You failed already. What? You failed already. You're not supposed to talk until I talk. You're supposed to let the room breathe, not rush over my thought patterns. I don't know about that. In my practice, we would- That's in your practice, Mr. Freud. Actually, may I call you Sigmund? No. All right. We're not using the practice that you pioneered, Mr. Freud. You voluntarily come to my practice and I use CBT. CB what? CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. It's a talking therapy much like your own, but it uses very different principles. Developed, you might say. Developed? It's a cheek. I created my theories from nothing. You just took mine and ran with them. I'm not disagreeing with you. Bloody nerve. Shall we start? I just want to check in with you before we dig any deeper. <sighs> All right. Can I have a cigar? No, I'm afraid not. Let's start with why you're here. I know I am here. Depression. I've been feeling under it the past few months and, and none of my own practices seem to be working. And what are these practices? Cocaine mostly. Cocaine. Yes, cocaine, brilliant stuff. It works wonders with depression, usually. But cocaine is a mind-altering drug, Mr. Freud. Exactly, my mind needs altering. I've got serious depression. Well, for now, I would suggest you don't, don't continue with the use of class A drugs as a medication. Yeah, what would you suggest then? Look, are you sure I can't have just one cigar? I'm afraid not. Wouldn't your therapy suggest that it was rather phallic related of you to want to smoke a cigar when we're trying to address your mental health? Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Mm. Mm -hmm. And phallic related hardly covers it. If, if by that you mean it, it is the id, uh, that is to say the unconscious and, and source of our basic impulses is, is leading me to, to desire to smoke this cigar, that is to say to engage with a phallus, uh, yeah, but it is covered by the superego seeking to moralize uh, all of this balance to force by the ego, desperately trying to balance the id and the superego. Well, well, and I think you're wording it quite badly. But by your own theory, the ego struggles with balancing the superego and the id and can be overburdened, which leads to conditions such as denial, repression, displacement, all of which can be connected to depression. You've read my work. Of course. Well, you needn't look so pleased with yourself. I'm not trying to point score, Mr. Freud. No one is questioning your invaluable and extraordinary contribution to the world of psychoanalysis. You are in fact deemed as the father of this whole practice. <clears throat> your work in the late 19th and early 20th century was the beginning of what is now a burgeoning and fascinating area of real medicine. Thank you. All I'm saying is that it is now 2020, and the work you began in the late 1800s is now evolved and grown as, as all medicine should. And the fact that you're suffering from depression and could be helped by modern medicine should be of comfort to you, especially knowing as none of us would necessarily be here without your breaking of foreign ground. Nicely put. Well, I suppose you may continue. You've, uh, you've had depression for a while, I note, and while you may have used unorthodox methods to try and counter it. Good little line of coke in the morning. Mm -hmm. It might be good to examine other ways through. Modern thought is that depression is like the weather, comes and goes. Sometimes it's simply a matter of enduring, but we also have medicines that can offer relief or help from this in terms of managing the chemicals in the brain. We're using CBT, a talk therapy that will hopefully- So you're not going to ask me about my sexual thoughts as a child? No. Or, or challenge me on my opinions of God? 
God. God. Melancholia, uh, not grief, but the clinging on to an emotion by someone who are almost willing themselves to remain in the feeling. It, it all ties up with God or wanting a, a more powerful supernatural father. We make ourselves infants in his presence. Religion's an illusion. It, it's a supernatural protector, a, a buffer for man's fear of nature, of death. Well, no, we weren't going to go into that. We might go into your past, but current findings are that they may not be a specific reason for depression. Some say that we pick up the ingredients, as it were, for depression as children, and then only actually become depressed later on in life when encountering similar situations. So you're not going to ask me about my childhood? Not really. It's not that useful to find out why you found the ingredients. Not useful? We want to give you the tools to manage it to get through your day. Well, this cognitive behavioral therapy sounds like a load of utter tosh. It all goes back to sex. Sex! Dreams are us covering up our sexual desires when we were children. Orgasms are how we function, uh, manage to function as human beings. The fear of castration is why anti-Semitism continues to be rife. As I've been saying this whole session, Mr. Freud, we've come a long way since your first findings. A lot of what you're saying has been contested or debunked. Debunked? What about the poppycock? What's next? Freudian slips aren't a thing? Well, we certainly don't utterly dismiss Freudian slips, but they are regarded more lightly these days. Lightly? Lightly? God knows what's happened to the world. I, I suppose Moliere was just an ordinary playwright, huh? Not a genius, or, or, or Botticelli, just a, a paint-by-numbers man, or, or Dickens. What? I suppose you consider the average gossip columnist's work to be an actual rival for a sale of two titties. Uh. Uh. Thank mm -hmm. you.